All right, good morning everybody. Just thought I would do this uh, little video. Hopefully it's gonna be pretty short. Oh, I can see sweat. <laughs> I walked away a little bit from the camp. This is where I like to come and sit um, to think and to meditate and to spend time with Father. So I just, I don't know, I just felt kind of compelled to go outside and get into this place to um, talk to you guys today. Something that's really important, very simple, won't take too long, but it's really key. To this end game and it's something that I've been seeing going back and forth in every aspect that I've been involved with um, since I've been on this exodus journey which happened about seven months ago so something that uh, father kind of just delivered into my heart and I've known it myself and practiced it practiced it and, and understood it and then just all of a sudden day before yesterday something was brewing in my heart and yesterday I made the decision that I needed to um, I needed to share. So that's what I'm doing here today. Um, I hope this finds everybody doing really well and that you're enjoying this period that we have where things can be getting turbulent, but we still um, can rest in the fact that we have a little peace still. Very, very soon that peace won't exist. We'll be moving about and, and calculating our moves and doing things in the midst of a lot of opposition. So this is a good time still that we're learning, being refined and recouping ourselves. What this is about is, once again, it goes back to sovereignty and the understanding of what it is and what it isn't. But it's more than just about sovereignty. The principle of sovereignty is huge. It's something everybody needs to understand and needs to get. But this is about this two-sided coin that I'm seeing all over, everywhere, in the Ascended, those that are awake. And there seems to be two, pretty much two frame of mind, frames of mind here in all this information that we, we watch all these different people presenting videos you know, the MMB, the Cosmic Agency, Naughty Beaver, Derek, um, you know, um, WSO, myself, we're all gleaning all this information and our own truths that are written on our heart are coming into light and we're like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, we're, we're developing this stance in this game and we know it's for us. But I'm noticing that there's these two basic points of view. One point of view is Derek's point of view that he shared very clearly in the last couple of videos of what's coming and how it's going to be both horrible and beautiful at the same time and it involves calamity and suffering and the prophesied end game and that it's coming and we need to be prepared for it um, very many people will not be and they will meet their demise only in their own brain because they won't be able to even find a way to process it and then there's the other side of that which they come from the same place the same spirit but they're believing that through this great might and power that we have in the office of Christ, that we are going to be able to manifest ourselves past and through and, and completely negate this end game that does involve calamity and suffering. And the, both, both perspectives are passionate. Both perspectives have, you know, good perspectives and points of view in them. But it, it, Father just said, this is the information that people need to hear for to make this decision once and for all, because you don't want to be walking on the wrong side when these things take place. Because if you can't wrap your head around what's coming, you're going to be one of those ones that all the allegories talk about. You will not survive it because you won't be prepared for it because you will have believed something that wasn't true. We know the duality. We know every time that there's something beautiful and benevolent, it has an alternate side that uses that beautiful benevolence to twist so that we end up getting caught up in something that's false, although it feels very passionately like it's right. So that's what this is about. And I do have some notes that kind of jotted down for me. So today's September 5th, which I tried to look at the date and I kind of went interesting. Um, for me, from the numbers that are representative to me, five is a, an archon number. It's a number of the op opposition in this end game, the mission. So September 5th. Of course, the rest of it's centered, centered around Christ consciousness. The ninth month, 333. 2019, 333, right? So we're talking about this situation being right in the midst of Christ consciousness. So this is very good. It's very con confirming for me. Okay, this is why we are not going to be able to manifest this end game away. And I know a lot of you beautiful, benevolent souls you see these these informations coming out saying that we can just raise the frequency high enough we can move ourselves into this fifth dimension and surpass the negativity because we are going to be able to create this high frequency love and it's going to override everything and believe you me believe you if 
it could happen. I would sign up for it in two seconds, because who wouldn't want that? Sounds like a way better deal than what I'm seeing. And I totally understand your heart. This is not about anybody having a wrong perspective or having a wrong motive in their heart at all. This is about a beautifully depicted truth being twisted in order to keep the game key players off track. That's what this is about. And it is my desire that I present the truth to everyone all the time so that these key players are not being duped. You're not being tricked. This is a very, very elaborate trick as are many of them, because the intelligence of our opposition is beyond anything you can imagine. It's very, very difficult to see how crafty and cunning this endgame is going to be proposed by the opposites, the negatives, the archons, the evil, the demons, the whatever you want to put the name in it, the miscreated. Okay, it's about sovereignty. What is sovereignty? Who has it? Every being in creation, every spark of Father is sovereign. Are the miscreated sovereign? Yes. Are the created sovereign? Yes. Are the angelic, the angels, sovereign? Yes. Humans? Yes. Father? Yes. Every divine spark of Father and Source himself, Father himself, is sovereign. That's his design. Does Father invade or usurp our sovereignty? I'm pretty sure you can answer that question yourself. That's a big whopping no. He created us, gave us sovereignty, and then gave us the freedom to wield it as we see fit. That's exactly it. So he doesn't do that. Are we to usurp anyone else's kingdom or sovereignty? Once again, I hope you know the answer to that. Absolutely not. Your sovereignty is designed for you to rule your kingdom, not someone else's, not to step on theirs, not to impede theirs, not to force yourself on theirs. That's absolutely not in Father's plan or his attributes just isn't non-benevolent sentient beings created now there are non-benevolent benevolent beings there are miscreated beings and they've created they created this prison matrix the same as father creates because they are sparks from him yes miscreated that they are they're still sparks from him they did create just the same way Father did, because we are all perfect holograms of Father. Yeshua made it very clear. We have exactly what he had, and he had all of Father, and we do too. We are in Father, and he is in us. There is nothing lacking there. These miscreations and their matrix flesh system prison is sovereign. Let that sink in. This matrix their choice to create this matrix and enslave the sparks of father the way that they have is a sovereign choice they are sovereign beings just like you are just like i am what they created stands and has to be respected in their sovereignty as fathers as ours it's exactly the same sovereignty. Being used the same way? No. But it's the same sovereignty, and Father never crosses that sovereignty, nor should we. Can our own sovereign creativity change this end game? Yes, yes, and yes. Of course it can. Can we improve, create high frequency, and victory in it? Yes, 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 yes. Of course we can. But only once we understand what sovereignty is and what it isn't. And I find so many times I come across this. Sovereignty is not a power trip. This is what it isn't. The right to push, run over, lord over, bully, change another's kingdom, manipulate, be king over another, impose your beliefs into another person's kingdom, tell them they have to move their kingdom because it doesn't work with your kingdom. Anything invasive. That's not what sovereignty is. It doesn't give you the right well, actually, it does give you the right. What I'm saying is Father's purpose in it is not to give you the right to exhort these things. Are the non-benevolent... Let's try that again. The non-benevolent, miscreated beings respecting this spiritual law? There's keys. Are they? No. This matrix, matrix does not respect anyone's sovereignty. It stomps on it, obliterates it, murders it, destroys it. So they're not playing by the rules, are they? That is to our 
advantage. We have the upper hand because we're operating in sovereignty, love, and high frequency as we operate in truth. And this is the truth. Sovereignty cannot be breached. Actually, it can, but there's a consequence of that. But believing that you can manifest us out of this suffering and calamity to this end game means you're joining the opposing side and you don't even realize you're doing it. Your benevolent compassion for all of Father Sparks, which is a beautiful thing, is being usurped to lead you to believe that you, with your good intentions and your beautiful heart, can just love everybody out of this so they don't have to suffer. And believe me, if we could, if I could find a way I'd join you, I would do it in a heartbeat. But because it breaches sovereignty, you cross over to the other side, unbeknownst to yourself. You're practicing in the low frequency of the miscreated beings who created this prison. It's an eloquent trap. Think about their sovereignty. We can't breach it. Why do you think that the benevolent beings that are outside of this system, that are coming in now through the collapse of this third dimension with the overlapping of the fifth, have not just shown up and said, here, we're here to kick butt. Let's just take this thing down. Because of sovereignty. They understand it. They see it for what it is. They will not do that. We cannot breach the sovereignty. We have to play within the sovereign rules of the miscreated. Doesn't mean we can't use their rules for our team. Doesn't mean we can't be intelligent and as sharp as a serpent, but gentle as doves. And the gentleness isn't the understanding that we cannot usurp their sovereignty. They have the right to use their power to be in sovereign. So do you. But you get to choose. And it is in sovereign to believe that you can manifest this end calamity and suffering away. It is written. It will happen. You just need the right perspective. And maybe I'm going to throw some videos out on that next. The absolute perfect perspective that you should be having in this so that you see the truth and you're in the right frequency. And that's pretty much it for this. That's all I wanted to say. And, I, you know, if you have to listen to this a couple of times, you might have to because you, there's just, it's just so easy to miss it. But this is absolute, ironclad, absolute proof because we all know the attributes of Father and He does not usurp our sovereignty. We cannot usurp someone else's unless we want to join the other side unbeknownst to ourselves. So there it is. Anyways, I wanted to show you this too because I thought it was really cool. I'm just going to turn the camera real quick. This is a beautiful, beautiful handcrafted walking stick that I have that was created by Mario, who's discovered this beautiful ability to work with wood that he... I think he probably understood that he had it somewhere in there because he's watched lots of videos about how to do this, but he's been creating these gorgeous, they're just gorgeous. I mean, in their raw form, I'm going to do some carving on this one, but I just, you know, I just wanted to share it. I thought it was cool. And so he's made a few for everybody out here and they really love them. And it's his way of loving on people. He just walks up and hands you one and says, I made this for you. It's pretty awesome. But anyways, I hope you guys have a great day. I love you so much. And um, I'll be back at you probably pretty soon. Talk to you soon. I said that already. Yeah. I know. I'm a dork. But I love you. Have a good day. Bye.